So what I'd like to do now is to uh, derive the equations which describe a batch reactor. So a batch reactor is usually a mechanically agitated or stirred vessel. Usually it has a jacket to provide heat transfer. In this case, we're going to talk, we're going to describe it as having a volume V in cubic meters. And we're going to think about a composition of a starting material A whose concentration is Ca, and that's in moles cubic meter. Before we start, it's important to state the assumptions that we're going to use. So we need to make a few simplifying assumptions in the first instance. So first of all, we're going to assume that it's constant volume. And a typical batch reactor has the materials charged at time t equals zero, and thereafter there's no no addition, no withdrawal. Uh, so the volume is approximately constant, um, as long as the density doesn't doesn't vary, and we're assuming it doesn't. We're also going to assume that the tank is well mixed, so that the temperature and the concentration at any point in the reactor uh, is the same. I've given out. Uh, we've got two variables there, we can add a third, which is actually the number of moles of A, so the total number, and that's simply equal to the volume multiplied by the concentration. That's expressed in moles. So what we want to do now is to do a material balance, and we use the usual material balance equation which is uh, applied generally for uh, such systems and that is that input minus output plus generation equals accumulation so what goes in minus what comes out plus anything that's generated equals what builds up in the system. Now in this case it's a battery reactor. We've already said when we're actually from the time of interest from time t equals zero there are no further inputs. So that term zero. That term zero. So we're left with generation equals accumulation. So if we consider a time interval delta T during the reaction and we're going to define another variable here which is RA which is the uh, reaction rate and that's expressed in moles cubic meter per second in this case and that's the rate of generation or consumption of uh, component A so in this case, component A is our starting material, and as the reaction proceeds, it will be consumed. So actually, RA will have uh, a negative value. So we can use RA in the generation term. So the reaction rate multiplied by the volume multiplied by our time, delta T, gives you the number of moles of A which have reacted during this time interval delta T. And because RA is negative, because A is actually reacting away and being consumed, we've actually got that this, this term will be a uh, will have a negative value. And that's equal to the accumulation. And the accumulation, we're going to use the the number of moles of A at the end of our time interval 
so that's t plus delta t minus the number of moles that were there at the start of our time interval at time t. I've got to say that that is delta Na over that time period. So that's the difference between Na at the start of the time period and the difference uh, and the number of moles at the end of the time period. So that's um, delta Na, number of moles that have disappeared during that uh, time interval. Uh, and if we just rearrange that slightly, so we divide both sides by V and delta T, we get that RA equals delta NA divided by delta T multiplied by 1 over V. And as delta T tends to zero, becomes um, smaller and smaller, then you can replace that with the, um, with the differential. So the RA equals 1 over V times DNA by DT. And furthermore, we know that um, earlier on we said that NA equals V times CA and therefore we can also write this as RA equals DCA by DT. Uh, and that's the, the very simplest form of the equation to describe a batch reactor.